Hey guys, it's Elisa here. It's so nice to see you here again. And today in this video, we are going to be making a pot holder. Uh, recently, I had a video on how to make an apron and draft a pattern for it in 30 minutes. Well, you can make a set of pot holders in about 30 minutes as well. So let's jump into the video if you would like to know how. So for this project, you really don't need much. All you have to have is two pieces of cotton fabric in the main material to match your kitchen set or maybe to match the uh, oven mitt that you recently made or the apron that I had in another tutorial, which I'm also going to link in, link in the info box below. So two pieces of cotton, the thicker the better. Then you're going to have one piece of the same size of Insul Bright insulated material. That material will actually reflect the heat back to the source. And that's what's also going to make your pot holder actually functional. And then you're also going to have one piece of just simple regular batting for extra protection and extra thickness. You will also need bias tape. You can either make your own, just like I did right over here, matching one, or you can purchase one from the shop. You will also need some pin needles, scissors, and you can possibly stitch this by hand. However, sewing machine, of course, is better, faster, and will uh, make your life a little bit easier. So let's get started. Step number one is super easy and straightforward. We have to create a sandwich. So a sandwich consists out of one side of Insul Bright, then just regular batting, which we're also going to cut right now to the uh, size because I had it a little bit bigger. And then we're going to sandwich it between two pieces of cotton and then we're going to quilt it. Now, you can quilt it however you would like it. You can quilt it uh, in squares, uh, straight squares or diagonal or however you would like them. I use a different uh, quilting stitch, which I'm going to show you in a second. So, this is once one. This is the middle part of the sandwich, and with Insul Bright, it doesn't matter which side you're using. Uh, both sides are uh, the same. Now, the next thing that you're going to do, you're going to put one of your pieces of cotton like this, flip it over, and your cotton cotton fabric. I suggest cutting a little bit. Uh, bigger than uh, your uh, batting and your insole break just because during quilting process it might move a little bit and it's always nice to have kind of like a little bit of margin for error and then you're going to put another piece on top just like that now the next thing that you will need to do is I'm not gonna pin it all together I'm just gonna pin it in a few places so that way the fabric would stay in place once I'm going to be quilting it. But other than that, you really don't need to uh, secure it too much in, 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 the, in the process. All right. There we go. And now let's make our way to the sewing machine. All right, now bring your uh, pot holder to the sewing machine and now we're going to choose the stitch. As I mentioned, you can use whatever stitch you would like for your quilting, um, but what I would like to use or what I like to use is this stitch right over here. Let me show this to you. Oop. Let me show this to you in a second. It's number 34. This is the one that I like to use and it works really, really well. And this is how the actual stitch looks on the pot holder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the whole pot holder using this stitch. And in a moment, we're going to start step number three of finishing our pot holder. All right, that's how the full quilted uh, pot holder looks like. And now it's when we are going to do step number three, where we're going to trim excess edges and we're going to attach our bias tape. All right, let's get to it. Now, to make sure that um, the whole pot holder has all of the layers and um, that everything is nice and neat, we will need to trim um, the edges. Now, uh, another thing that you want to make sure is that um, if you um, are okay with doing square corners with a bias tape, leave the corners square. If you want to make your life a little bit easier, I would suggest for you rounding the corners and I'll show you how. So it's super easy. Obviously you just trim the excess. 
first trim your corners just like they would be square. And then what you're going to do is you're going to round them, maybe starting about an inch down each side. Because the interfacing and the batting and the two layers of cotton, because they're so thick, it's really, really, really hard to uh, cut through them. So the scissors are a little bit heavy going. There we go. All right. So that's how my that's how my corners are going to be slightly slightly rounded. So there we go. All right. And we're going to do the same thing right over here. And this would be a great gift uh, to give somebody for a housewarming or maybe Christmas uh, or um, if somebody really likes to bake uh, this would be a nice little gift uh, maybe like a matching set of pot holders maybe like insulated lunch bag or a uh, um, maybe like a oven mitt and matching pot, pot holders or an apron by the way I do have a, a tutorial on how to make apron um, without a pattern super easy and I'll link that in the info box below so that you can guys can go and check it out all right and that apron you can also make not only for the kitchen needs but it could be like an artist smock and stuff like that all right, so the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to attach your bias tape. And it seems like something here is not quite even. There we go. So the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to attach the bias tape. And you're going to start by attaching your tape like that and you just pin it in place and make the way uh, to your sewing machine and stitch it with a straight stitch. Well, I have pinned my bias tape in place and I'm almost ready to finish my pot holder. Now there's one thing to remind you of. If you want to make a little loop, which majority of the store-bought pot holders will have, usually has like a little loop so that you can hang it, uh, you want to make sure that you leave the rest of your bias tape like this. You can shorten it uh, to the approximate size or length of the loop, it's not a problem, but don't cut it all um, off um, while you have not attached your bias tape to your pot holder because once you make your way from here till all the way around the pot holder, you will not stop stitching. You will stitch through maybe like, I don't know, uh, four inches or so. And after that, we will fold it like this and we will stitch it in place and that way it will make a nice little loop for your pot holder. All right, I'll be right back with my bias tape stitched in place. So I have attached my bias tape to my pot holder and we only have one last step left before our pot holder is ready to be used. However, there's just one thing I wanted to mention to you before we get done is usually I'm really, really meticulous about how my stitches are so that everything is nice and neat and even and so forth. However, with pot holders and with also with the oven mitts, it's so thick there is like four layers of material that you put together and then you have to quilt them and then you have to um, you know stitch through them it's really hard for the needle to go through so even if it's like this usually I don't fuss around it and I just say you know what that will do because otherwise you will spend hours and hours and hours trying to get it all nice and neat and even and sometimes it's not even 100% sure if you're gonna catch the other side so I would say in this case scenario, try to get it as best as you can, but just don't fuss about it. If it's uh, if it's not maybe as neat or as perfect as you would like it to be. Now the last thing that you want to do is you want to trim this end um, as long or as short as you need it for it to form a loop. And on this side, all you're gonna do is you're gonna stitch it either with your sewing machine 
or by hand and your pot holder is going to be ready to use. All right, I simply attached this little loop over here and your pot holder is ready. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Give this video a thumbs up, enjoy other videos, and also watch how you can make a full apron in about 30 minutes. Once again, thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope that you found this video useful. I really hope that you will make a few pot holders for yourself and that uh, you will make them as gifts and for your household. And again, thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Like, share, subscribe. Bye!